basement, daughter of Ishmael and sister of Nebliyaz. Adoth bore Ishbizah. The basement bore Rayu and Holabama bore Juice, Jalem, and Kabam. These were Esau's sons who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Okay, there you go. So these are all the sons of Esau. Now, why are we mentioning Esau? If he's not in the line of the Messiah, it's a little branch. Why are we mentioning him? Anytime you see somebody mentioning all of their descendants, here's the genealogy of Jesus is here, and all these little things that come off and they mention them. It's because they are going to somehow do something. Jesus. No, they're not going to point to Jesus, but they're going to affect the people of Israel in the future. We're going to see these, all of these different Ishmael and Esau and all of their descendants later. And Edom in particular uh, weighs highly on uh, the book of Deuteronomy, I believe. Maybe Numbers and Deuteronomy. And then later in the Bible, and there's going to be judgments maybe in Jeremiah or Isaiah. Some of these other prophets are going to talk about the sons of Edom. Okay, That's why they're being mentioned is because they affect the people of Israel in God's working through the people of Israel to the Messiah. That's why they're being mentioned. If they had no bearing, they wouldn't give us all these genealogies. Okay, go ahead. Esau took his wives, sons, daughters, and all the people of his household, as well as his herds, all his livestock, and all the property he had acquired him. He went to a land away from his brother Jacob, for their possessions were too many for them to live together. Okay, who else had that same problem? No. Another, another generation up. Abraham and Lot. Same thing. Remember that? All right. Go wherever, whichever way you turn to the right, I'll turn to the left. If you turn, and so a Lot looked down and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan was well watered and suitable for flocks. And so he took his family and his uh, possessions down to Sodom and Gomorrah. But same thing happened there. And so these people are dividing. And this is showing the division of the nations to their respective locations, which would eventually bear on the people of Israel. Go ahead. For them to live together, and because of their herd, the land where they stayed could not support them. Hmm. So Esau, that is Edom, read <laughs> the mountains of Seir. These are the family records of Esau, father of Edomites in the mountains of Seir. And there are a lot of names coming up. Um, oh, boy. Okay, I'm here. Oh, my. There are the names of Esau's sons, Ephazah, son of Esau's wife, Da, and Uriel, son of Esau's wife, Basemuth. Basemuth is still a common name among Muslims today, just so you know. Go ahead. The sons of Ephazah were Teman, Omar, Zepho, Gaitan, and Kenan. Tima, a contraband of Esau's son, Ephazah, or Emelech. Okay, Amalek. All of a sudden the name Amalek comes in. Anybody know about the Amalekites? Amalekites are going to be enemies of Israel, great enemies of Israel. They're going to, on the way into Israel, they battled the Amalekites. Okay, eventually uh, Saul was told to destroy the rest of Amalekites. All right, the king Agag, who was one of the Amalekites, was spared by uh, uh, Saul. Samuel was very angry. He went and cut King Agog to pieces. All right, And the Lord said, because you've done this, they're going to be uh, 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 affecting you forever. The Amalekites are always going to be at enmity with Israel. You were supposed to destroy the people, and they didn't. And guess who is the chief, the chief enemy of Israel in the book of Esther when they're living up in Persia? Haman the Agagite, a son of Agog who was cut to death, cut to pieces by Samuel. In other words, that's why these names are in here. It's because they affect Israel all the way down. And you know what? There's probably still Amalekites out there because God says it's going to be forever. You're going to be struggling with these people. All right. So uh, the guy that I was with in Israel, he said, yeah, these terrorists are all Amalekites. That's what he calls them based on what God said. And now, it doesn't mean they're really Amalekites, but that's what he called them. He used the term, they're Amalekites. Anyway, there are people that are at enmity with God, and Haman was the one that wanted to destroy all of the Jews in the Persian Empire at one time. God turned it around. doesn't say God in the book of Esther ever, but we know it was God's working. It was turned around, and so since then, since the time of the book of Esther, they have celebrated 
continuously, year after year after year, the Feast of Purim. That's right. P-U-R-I-M, which means lots. They cast lots for when the Jews would be destroyed and lots were turned around in the Jews' favor. So, there you go. All right, but that's why that name Amalekite, Amalek shows up right here. All right, go ahead. These were the sons of Esau's wife. These are Reuben's, Reuel's sons. Nahath, Zerah, Shemath, and Nisam. These were the sons of Esau's wife, Basil. These are the sons of Esau's wife, Oholiadah, daughter of Ahab, and granddaughter of Zibion. She bore Jerush, Jalam, Koran, Judah. These are the chiefs of Esau's sons, the sons of Edith. Esau's firstborn, chiefs, Taman, Omar, Zephthol, Kanaz, Korah, Adam, Amalek. These are the chiefs of Ephraim in the land of Edom, Red. <laughs> sons of <laughs> and I like the name Zepho, the one you read about a verse ago. I don't know. It's a cool name, Zepho. Yeah. I wouldn't name my son Zepho because he's the son of Esau, but it's... Yeah, something like that. Zepho. It's just a cool name. Hey, Zepho. Okay, go ahead. These are the sons of Ralph, Esau's son. Chiefs, Nahaz, Zerah, Shemath, and Mizam. These are the chiefs. What do they mean, chief? The heads of the tribe. It would be like a chief would be, uh, you have the, the 12 sons of Israel, and then they had their own sons, and maybe each of those sons became a chief of a lesser tribe. You have the main tribe, and then you have chiefs of... The Bible calls dukes. Dukes? In that Bible? I've never heard that one before. That's the first time I've ever heard the term duke used. What, what version is that? This is Dake's annotated. Is that right? I've never heard that before. I'll have to read that version. Huh. Dukes. These are the chiefs of Ruel in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Esau's wife, Basil. These are the sons of Esau's wife, Oholiabama. Chiefs, Jerus, Jalam, and Karam. These are the chiefs of Esau's wife, Oholiabama. Daughter of Abraham. These are the sons of Esau, that is Edom. And these are their chiefs. These were the these are the sons of Seir and Horak, the inhabitants of the land, Lotah, Shobah, Zubiah, and Okay, now what they're doing here is he moved to the land of Seir. And so they are showing the genealogy of the people who are in Seir now. Not just Esau who moved there, but who are the tribes that are in that land as well? Because eventually, you know, they're either going to intermarry or one is going to win out over another. And so they're showing that. Because the same people that are there are the ones that are going to be coming against Israel. And so they're showing us these genealogies for history's sake. Everything is in here to show us history. Because these people didn't keep records the way the Jewish people did. The Jewish people kept these records. When we get to the book of Chronicles, it's going to go on and on and on. But they all have a bearing on Israel. And that's why they're... And as I said, it's not just Israel at this time or at this time or at this time, this is all the way through. We can trace these people even to this day through who we know they migrated here, they migrated there. And so this is something that people do, biblical studiers. They actually follow the migration of these people all over and they know who is doing what and how they are still affecting Israel all this time. It's, it's fantastic what people do. This Bible says that the Hortites were a branch of the giants who came from the sons of God and daughters of men after the flood. Which is Genesis 6, I believe. Um, and I'm going to read you that. And seeing as how you brought that up, um, we're, we're going to divert real quickly. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, we got time. All right. You were referring to the sons of God. And it says in, yes, Genesis 6, it says, Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they were beautiful. And they took wives for themselves among all of whom they chose. Okay? All right? And then it, down in verse 4, it says, they, There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, those who were mighty, men of renown, men of old, men of renown. Okay? Your Bible, that comment that they said they're descendants of these people, is wrong. 
How do you know they're wrong? That's in Genesis 6. There's no doubt that it's wrong, 100% wrong. Okay? Very good reason why we are careful with Bible commentaries. What happened in Genesis 8? Well, actually, 7 and 8. What, what, what is it that Noah was doing? Building the ark. The ark. The flood. What does it say? In Genesis 7, 21, it says, And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds and cattle and beasts and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every man. And how many people were saved on the ark? Just Noah and his family. Eight people in all. Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their three wives. Eight people in all. That's confirmed in the New Testament in the book of uh, 2 Peter. All right? And maybe even in Jude, but it's in 2 Peter. And so that tells you that that analysis is wrong. And the reason why it's wrong is because everything died except those eight people, unless you don't hold to a worldwide flood. It could have been written by somebody that didn't think it through or somebody that believes that the flood was local only. Okay? I hold to a worldwide flood. Genesis 7, where? Well, Genesis 7, uh, I just closed it. 21, is that what I said? Genesis 20, 7, 21. So all of those people in Genesis 6 had died. Now, I'm not going to get into it, but um, it, 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 maybe they did there. I don't know. There are two possibilities as far as... Might as well get into it. Seeing as how we'll review real quickly. Let me erase some of this stuff because I ran out of room. And, um, and this will give him a break from reading all those names, which, you know, it gets a little... It's not tedious in itself, but you want to kind of stand back from it occasionally because if you read just the book of Chronicles straight through you get watery eyes not because it's boring but just because there's so much information but um, sons of God came into the daughters of men sons of God came into the daughters of men does your commentary tell anything about who the sons of God are and the daughters of men we went through this and this is review for the people in the class but I want to make sure that if you don't know this, or if your commentary says, there are two views, actually there's quite a few views, but there are two prevalent views. Okay. It, to go to 14.6. Okay, that would be the Nephilim maybe, I don't know. Um, uh, maybe not too, I don't know. 14.6 would be, uh, that's after the tower. In their mouth. Okay, that's, they're referring back and forth. So once again, uh, that is after the flood, so they're not descendants of them. Because they didn't think through, like I said, there's only two things that the guy, guys were doing that made that commentary. Either the first one is they didn't think of the flood and they just says, oh, and I had somebody email me one time about something in King David's time. And he says, oh, these people go all the way back to Genesis 6, the same, same thing. And I said, no, they don't. And he says, well, sure they do. It's the same name. I said, you know, I got the same name as somebody over in Alaska, maybe. It doesn't mean that there's any relation at all. I said, the flood destroyed everything on the earth. So either it was a local flood on the earth right here, and all of these people did survive, and the Bible is wrong, or uh, is, that was one of them, uh, two possibilities I was going to say about that. Oh, or they simply forgot about the Genesis account, and they're making an equate between the two. It, those are the only two possibilities, but it is certainly not the same people. Anyway, the sons of God, I'll explain this real quickly just because... Well, it says uh, after the flood. Right. So they must be taking the flood into account. Who said after the flood? It says, the Hortites were granted to the giants who came from the sons of God and daughters of men after the flood. So I guess men is from Noah. Right. right. But they're not the same group of people from before the flood. Yeah. They said after the flood. Wow. Okay. But it would have had to have come from Noah then. See, it, it's just kind of not a very clear yeah. uh, thing. It, now, just so you know, and that what they said, maybe what they're thinking is what I'm going to teach you here. And if that's the case, then I have no problem with it. You have in the Bible a genealogy which starts with Adam, and then it goes down through. Ten names, Seth, and then it goes through, you know, all the same people and it gets to Noah. You got Methuselah in there and you've got all these other people. Then you've got Adam's other sons and daughters, and one of them is Cain, okay? And you got all these other sons and daughters, and they give these genealogies here. Okay? Now some people say that the sons of God are angels and they came in and they slept with human beings. Okay? That's what and that's their doctrine. They believe that that's the case. And they get it from like the book of Jude. They misread the book of Jude and they misread other passages. And they say, so the people called the Nephilim, which are mentioned in the, this same book of Genesis, 